every scaling rotation matrix has complex eigenvalues. But not every matrix with complex eigenvalues is a scaling rotation matrix. We will see this at the start of this video. However, we will also learn that every matrix with complex eigenvalues is similar to a scaling rotation matrix. So that means the following. If we know how to deal with scaling rotation matrices, then we also know how to deal with matrices with complex eigenvalues. So let us see how those two are related in this video. So start with the scaling rotation matrix C. Let's take a look at its eigenvalues. So we compute the determinant of C minus lambda times the identity. So put the minus lambda there. So to compute your P lambda, so you get A minus lambda times A minus lambda uh, minus minus B times B. So you get the P lambda of A minus lambda squared plus B squared. In order to find the eigenvalues, you have to put it to zero, put the B squared to the other side, and you find lambda equals A plus or minus B times I. So every scaling rotation matrix has complex eigenvalues. Now, uh, we take at some other example, matrix A over here, uh, clearly not a scaling rotation matrix. Let us take a look at the eigenvalues. So put the minus lambda at the diagonal and compute the P lambda. So you get a 2 minus lambda times minus lambda, minus minus 2 plus times 1. So you get a plus 2. So your P lambda becomes lambda squared minus 2 lambda plus 2. Uh, in order to find the eigenvalues, you have to set this to 0, and you find lambda minus 1 squared plus 1 equals 0, or lambda equals 1 plus or minus i. Uh, so the matrix A has complex eigenvalues, but it is not a scaling rotation matrix. However, we can do a nice trick. Uh, we can take this matrix P. We'll say later. Why we just take this matrix P? Just take this matrix P, and now we compute a matrix M, uh, where we compute our matrix A with respect to another basis. So we compute P inverse A times P over here. Well, of course we can do that. Why? Also later, something nice will happen. With this matrix P over here, uh, inverse is easy. Like the term is two, so you have to divide by two. And then you change the numbers on the diagonal and put minuses to the off diagonal elements. So there you go. So we have our P inverse times A times P. Well, you know how to compute the product of two by two matrices. Um, first, uh, we do the, the last product. So uh, this one and copy this over here. So with, for example, the row column rule, the first element gives you four minus two equals two. Then we get a two, a minus two and a zero product of the last two. And then the next product, this product over here, again row column rule, you get a 2 plus 0 equals 2, a minus 2 plus 4 equals 2, this, this two over here, uh, and a minus 2 and a 2 over here. So there we go. And still the 1 half. So you, if you include that, you get 1, 1, 1 and a minus 1. But now all of a sudden, we have got a scaling rotation matrix. Because the numbers on the diagonal are the same, and the numbers of the diagonal are the same to a sign. So in fact, what we see is that uh, we have gotten the C. So we have C equals P inverse AP, or A equals PC, P inverse. So this A with complex eigenvalues is not a C matrix, but this A is similar to a C matrix. So in another basis, it is in fact a C matrix. So was this a coincidence and how did we find P? Well, of course it was not a coincidence. We have a nice theorem which tells us how to do this. Uh, theorem 1 over here. Uh, if we have a real 2 by 2 matrix with complex eigenvalues, lambda equals A plus BI, and then we have we need B is not equal to zero. So really a complex eigenvalue, so a non-zero imaginary part. So lambda equals A plus BI. And then you can find its corresponding eigenvector v, of course. If you have that, then you can always write as PCP inverse. So then 
A similar to a C matrix. And how do you find them? Well, your C matrix, for that you just use your lambda. You put the A over here and the B over there, and here the minus B. And for the P the matrix, you need this one eigenvalue. You put the first column, uh, as first column, you put the real part of your eigenvector. And as your second co column, you put minus the imaginary part of your eigenvector. So in order to determine your P and C, you need one eigenvalue and one corresponding eigenvalue, uh, sorry, one eigenvector and the eigenvalue, uh, and that gives you your P and C. And notice they are both real. So this way you can uh, write uh, A as P, C, P inverse, where both P and C are real matrices.